I call the meeting to order and ask you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning and welcome to the July 19th, 2022 meeting of the County Commission. I would remind you to silence your cell phones. Um, if you need a listening device, you can talk to Tyler in the front row over there in the blue suit. Um, our meeting documents are in the white folder on the table over there. And um, I think with that, we're ready to move on. I look for a motion to approve the agenda. I make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number two is a consent agenda. Take a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Is second. Second, Beninga. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Roll call vote. Bender. Aye. Benigo. Aye. Barth. Aye. Karski. Aye. Heiberger. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Next is the opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone here that would like to speak on something that is not on today's agenda, this would be your opportunity. Seeing no one, we will move on to our regular business. Item number 10 is a public hearing to appeal a decision of the Minnehaha County Planning Commission to approve PU or CUP number 22-44 to allow an agriculturally related operation, the colostrum storage, on the properly legally decide described as the west 99 feet of the east 297 feet of the north 440 feet lot to northeast one quarter except H-1 section 4 township 103 north range 49 west. Mason, that is a mouthful. <laughs> yes, it is. Good morning, Commissioners. Mason Steffen from the County Planning Department. So as explained, the Planning and Zoning Office has received an appeal of conditional use permit 2244, which is to allow an agricultural related operation for colostrum storage. Uh, colostrum is the first milk that is produced from cows after they give birth, and it is uh, collected in order to help baby calves out, um, once they come out of the womb of their mother. Uh, the property for this prop the property is located uh, at the corner of Highway 115 and 250th Street, and it is a one-acre parcel uh, that is still located, or that is still zoned agriculture, and is located just directly west of the Baltic Corner Bar. Uh, the two acres to the east is zoned commercial for the Baltic Corner Bar, but that one-acre parcel to the west is zoned agriculture. Uh, this item was heard at the Planning Commission at their meeting on June 27, 2022. At that time, no neighbors were present, and the item was approved as part of the consent agenda, and it was approved unanimously. Uh, the appeal letter for this request was signed and submitted by the neighbor directly south of the subject property, as you can see on that location map here. And in the appeal letter, the neighbor stated that they have concerns with the potential noise and sight nuisances that the operation could create. And they also stated that they would like trees planted on the south side of the operation, as well as the storage buildings for the operation be painted a neutral color. Uh, with that, I'll scroll through some pictures here of the property. Um, so here is a picture looking directly south. Uh, you can see the refrigerated storage container on the property there. And just off in the distance is the appealing neighbor's residence. Here's looking more to the west, to the other nearest neighbor, about a quarter mile to the west. And then here is looking to the east, back up towards the Baltic Corner Bar, so you can see that the proposed operation is just on the back side of the Baltic Corner Bar there. Here's looking at one of the accesses to the site. This is the one that goes directly down to that operation. Uh, but if you scroll down to the next picture, it shows there are a few more accesses onto the property, and that kind of shows the intersection of 250th Street and Highway 115. Uh, with that, the Minneapolis County Commission can uphold, deny, or amend the Planning Commission's approval decision for CUP 2244, and I'm available for questions. Questions for Mason? All right, Commissioner Carsey, did you have one? Not yet. OK, 
Okay, I have a question, and that is, um, do you know how long that um, trailer has currently been running on that site? Uh, so this property started as a nuisance operation when the county building inspector was at the Baltic Corner Bar and he noticed that there was a storage container behind the property without a building permit. So that is how it started, and that was back in February. Okay, so um, the truck has been running for a while. Yes. Okay, and the other one is, are there currently any trees between this the property line on the south and the neighbors i mean because on the one picture it looks like there's a line of evergreen trees already on the prop on the yes. opponents so there's already a line of trees there is a line right of now. trees there on the okay. north side of the neighbors south side of this property okay yes. thank yep. you any other questions for mason at this point commissioner karski how long and i think you asked and i missed it how long has it been there before we have known it. about it since February, and then we, since then, we've been trying to get them to apply for the conditional use permit, and we eventually got them to apply, so that's so, well, proving this before the building permit, okay. basically. And the reefer could have been maybe used for storage for alcohol, if you know, if it could have been. It's not, but it could have been, okay. which would be part of the business. And that's what we thought it was at first. We thought yeah. it was on the commercial business being used for right. that operation. Yeah. So yep. that's how it started. Okay. Okay, so this is a public hearing, so we will give an opportunity for the proponent, the person in favor of this, to speak first, then the opponent, the person who's against this, um, or has appealed this, and then back to the proponent to have um, an opportunity to rebuttal. So is there anyone here in favor of this um, zoning? You come up and give your name. If you haven't put your address on our sheet over by the door, if you would just do that before you leave, put your name and address so we can have it as part of the record. Then you don't have to give your address publicly here. Okay. Um, Dustin Stuhl. Um, we originally put that reefer unit there in November, had it running uh, roughly the last week of December. Uh, you can see on the top of it, there's just two more or less air conditioner units, so it's quite quiet. Um, when we do load out of there, that's probably the noisiest time when we've got skid loaders running for maybe two hours once a month. Uh, obviously, it's right behind our bar and grill, so we were trying to keep you know, noise down and smell and everything else. Um, right to the west of that, or right where you can kind of see a freezer sitting there, there's supposed to be another building going there, or a, like a shipping container there to store our supplies and the pails. We also have some freezers on hand for the dairies that we delivered, or that we pick up from. and. Uh, just some other various things that we have around there uh, for loading and all that good stuff, which we'd like to get that put hidden, covered up, or whatever, and not in the way. So, okay. Any questions for Dustin? Commissioner Karski? So, powered by electrical? Electric, yep. Okay, not a generator not running a or anything like nope. that. So you have, I that see way. the utility poles there. That yeah, right beside that bio, kind of right beside that little enclosed trailer. There's a that's where the power kind of comes from, okay. roughly. Okay. If you have nothing else, we will listen to the opponents. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone here to speak against this zoning? Good morning. My name is Mark Rogers, and I own the property directly south of this. Um, when the dirt work started originally on this, I called planning and zoning and asked them about it. Planning and zoning told me there's nothing wrong. They don't need a building permit to do dirt work. And I said, well, I said, obviously something's going on here. And they said, well, we'll watch it. And next, you know, the units put up there, which I would have thought that they would have talked to me first before putting something up. And as you can see, our property is right there and off the back between those trees is our back deck that we sit on a lot. Now this does make quite a bit of noise at nine o'clock at night or whatever when we're sitting out there on our deck, watch TV or whatever, you can hear the fan running on the unit all the time. My question was, how were they able to put this up without a building permit to start with? And you would have thought there would have been electrical permit an electrical inspection must have been pulled because there was electrical run to it, you know, a new meter. Obviously, that wasn't done. And since this has been put in, I mean, I know Dustin well, and uh, colostrum storage, but also does a lot of liquid nitrogen. So, and I know he has liquid nitrogen. Is that being stored there too? Liquid nitrogen's a gas that can explode if it's leaks out. It, I mean, you can research it. It's 
it's not the you get burns is probably the biggest concern with it you know if you're handling it but it can if stored if it leaks it becomes explosive gas so that's my questions and concerns there and obviously i would think that since this has happened i would think that the health inspectors would have to have been out there you know checked out the trailer make sure what's being stored what's being stored properly the, i'm not against or opposed totally to it but I think it should look a lot nicer. And yeah, I have, those are my trees on the property there, mm -hmm. not theirs. And there is a big gap in there. So if they're going to make money off of this, my question is, <clears throat> excuse me, I think they should have to put in some mature trees on our side in between and have this, and I read on there, nothing's supposed to be stored outside. Well, obviously stuff's stored outside. It should look decent. I mean, even driving into Baltic, so you see this. I mean, Brian Hefty in the area has bought all the land out, cleaned up Baltic itself where the trailers used to be. So I would think you'd want to keep everything looking properly and nice. Um, I guess we're asking for, if this is going to be approved, for trees to be put in on ours and or trees put in and fencing and painting done around this property. They're obviously making money with it. The noise and lighting's a concern. Yes, we can hear the fan running on the AC. Nine o'clock at night gets pretty quiet around there. We're sitting out there, you can hear it. You can see it from my properly clearly. Um, and it's sorry, it's a, kind of an eyesore. I would like it to be addressed and that taken care of. And it's located 270 feet from my property line. And um, is there going to be more going back further? And this never used to be agriculture because I used to be married to Elizabeth, Dustin's wife, and this property was a housing because when we built that place, we were able to transfer the housing eligibility over to the property since it touched. So I'm not sure how anything changed. There's a rental house just to the south of the bar, and that in the property behind that where it's all res residential. The only thing that at the time was it was commercial was where the bar was sitting at. So I guess I'm not sure how some of that changed or if it changed. Um, the only thing we're asking for is protect our property value. Um, I believe that's not asking a lot, put in some trees and make it nice. The lighting and the noise is concerned. And then also the, uh, What's the health concerns? Is there being liquid nitrogen stored in there? And is it being stored properly? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for, for Mr. Rogers? Madam Chair, I, I should tell you that I know Mark okay. uh, from years ago. I didn't realize that you were involved in this. So uh, during the original planning commission meeting, uh, you didn't come. Did you not get notified? Um, if you want to know the truth, <laughs> my son grabbed the mail and we were gone for a couple days. He didn't tell us there was anything there. I read the notice on Friday, July 1st, about 5 p.m., <laughs> 6 p.m., and we were leaving on vacation the next day. So I had to, that's why you have a handwritten note of appeal. I wrote it out and I had to have my son drop it off on Tuesday for Thanks. the appeal. Just wondering. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Rogers? Okay. Um, thank you. We'll call you back if we have any other questions. All right. Thank, thank you. you. And then we'll give the uh, um, opponent an opportunity to comment. So I guess some of my rebuttal on this is, is like the dirt piles and everything will be cleaned up because I don't want them there anyway. Um, I haven't purchased a shipping container or anything like that yet because of the appeal was part of it last winter or last winter fall when we were trying to get the dirt work done before it froze. Um, the company that were that that shipping container or whatever's coming from, they didn't have one at the time and then we got some snow and I said, well, let's just wait till spring when things are a little bit more set up. At that time, I'd been talking with Mason a little bit and I thought, well, before we purchase that, we're gonna, you know, make sure that this is all approved and everything's 
good to go on that end before we submit more money. Um, there is no liquid nitrogen stored on that. This is completely separate from the company I work for. It's a, it's a sister company of the company I work for, but it's completely separate. As far as health inspections, that it, it is getting monitored. It has to be monitored from the standpoint that all this classroom goes up to Canada. They have to know where it's stored. They have to know, uh, of course, through customs or going through the border. I don't know how that all works exactly, but that's done. As far as noise, I, I struggle to believe that they can hear it. Um, you know, Mark had no problem building that house there right next to a bar that's quite loud most of the time at nine o'clock at night. I mean, we got speakers on the side of the bar pointing kind of towards the house with the jukebox running all the time too. Um, it's all, like I said, as far as health concerns, no, we're, we're not gonna have that issue if we would have any leaks. I mean, it's frozen. Um, they're stored all in individual pails that even if they would thaw out, they wouldn't leak. Mm -hmm. would, you know, obviously it would be a huge concern on, on my end to get this whatever working or get it froze again. Um, and yeah, we obviously want to kind of get it cleaned up as well, just for the fact that it's right next to our, you know, me and my wife's business, so. Okay, questions? I have an, another one. Did I miss, maybe, maybe misunderstood, but are you putting in a different reefer later or? Uh, it'd be like a, it'd be very similar to that. It didn't want to have the cooling capacity to it, but that's just for the storage side of it. Okay, and so it would be this one and another one? Or it would, yeah. Okay, and they're side by side? Yeah. All right. Chair, curious, sir. Um, you know, tell me how this ended up here versus somewhere else. What what do you do, and why why did so, this end up here? So I work for Alta Genetics, which we, we we specialize in bovine reproduction. So mainly I work with large dairies on the you know breeding side of things. Um, our sister company, Skatchin Colostrum Company. Um, takes this colostrum, dries it down into a powder that we can use for whether can't get enough on farm or disease load, whatever it may be. When they were looking for to set one in the, the I-29 corridor area, I'm, I made the comment, I'm like, well, you know, we've got space right behind the bar that big enough that we can get a semi in there, like I said, roughly once a month, um, pretty open area. Seemed like it was an easy spot to be, plus I can kind of manage it like I mean, we check we do temperature checks on it once a day i'm close by um we didn't know who we were gonna have hired to pick up the colostrum at that time didn't know where he would live so you know like i said weekends we usually still try and check temperature make sure that you know if the compressor would go down or whatever that it's being monitored that's kind of how it ended up close proximity to me more or less was the biggest reason for it okay okay any other questions all right, I think I have a question for staff, so thank you. You can sit down, I have a question for staff. Uh, staff, where are you? Oh, Mason, there. And Mason, this is um, this was already zoned as A1 agricultural, is that correct? Yes, so I think there might be a bit of confusion. The east two acres were, zone, were rezoned from A1 agriculture to commercial to allow for the bar, not the other okay. way. So this was just still agriculture along with the rest of the this is agricultural and it's just allowing an agricultural business on that agricultural site. Is that correct? correct? Yep. And do we have currently have any um, restrictions on this, um, um, this A1 agricultural business? Did we put any, I just want to have it publicly said if we did. The conditions that for, yes. on the staff report? Sure, yes. I can read through those here. Yep. So the six conditions that were on the staff report originally at the Planning Commission were that this permit shall allow for the storage and shipping of colostrum and that all storage on the property must be contained within an enclosed structure, that no parking or loading shall be allowed within the right-of-way of County Highway 114 or State Highway 115, that a building permit is required for the storage container and any future buildings on the property, that any signage shall be in conformance with articles 16 and 17 of the 1990 revised zoning ordinance for Minnehaha County. A building permit is required for the installation of any signage. That all outdoor lighting shall be of a full, cut, fully cut off and fully shielded design to prevent direct spillage of light beyond the property boundary. And that the planning and zoning department reserves the right to enter and inspect the business at any time after the proper notice to the owner to ensure that the property is in full compliance with the conditional use permit conditions 
of approval and the Minnehaha County Zoning Ordinance. Okay. So those are the six. Thanks, Mason. All right, it's back to the commission. Let's whether you have questions or action. I have a question for Mason. Sure. So go back to the pictures of the, um, what's being, of the refrig, refer unit there. So we've got there on the right, we've got, looks like an outside freezer, some other stuff. That stuff wouldn't be allowed under this conditional use permit, correct? No, that is why the extra storage container that Dustin talked about would be necessary. Um, okay. But we can't permit that until the actual operation is approved with this okay. permit. So an extra storage container, we're talking like a shipping container what are we talking about? um yes i believe in the application it says that it would have a 10 by 40 refrigerated unit which is this one mm -hmm. and then an 8 by 40 uh shipping container for extra storage that's what it okay. says in the application so would we allow if we approve the cup a second reefer unit on there or a third or a fourth? Say that again? Would we allow additional? I mean, what would it take if you wanted to have more than one unit on here, if you wanted to expand it to two or um, three or four? I guess if you would like to limit it to those two, you can. Uh, if you want to have a condition where he's limited to those two buildings, um, as of right now, there wouldn't be. And, and that's, I'm worried about the creep of stuff getting added to this. Um, and I'd like to see a setback also on the condition. I think the neighbor said it's currently 270 feet, I believe, to have a, a minimum setback from the property, the south property line also, I think, would make some sense to give the neighbor a little bit of cushion. Um, just a couple ideas that I had running through my head, so throw it out there for discussion or to add it to the conditions. Commissioner Bender. So if I could just ask for a point of clarification, are you suggesting that they would have to come back to get permission for every additional um, refrigeration unit? Uh, just for Scott Anderson, planning director. So for clarification, uh, if they were to expand beyond what they have right now, it would require a conditional use, per conditional use permit amendment, which would uh, bring it back in front of the Planning Commission for review and approval. So they have to adhere to the site plan, and the site plan is for the one unit. If they were to expand, it would be a CUP amendment. Yeah. So, Scott, does that include this additional building that they're already talking about putting on there? I know it says that they'll need a building permit, for this other storage unit that they're gonna, that's part of the plan. That would be part of the plan, right? Yeah. It's the, already okay. on the site plan. Okay. The, the two, this one and then the other, can, the other storage unit would be part of the site plan. Um, so anything more than those two would require an amendment, not just. So this one and the additional one would require building permits, but not an amendment to the conditional <laughs> use permit. Anything more than those two would require an amendment to the conditional use permit. So the site plan is part of the conditional use permit. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I guess the one of the conditions isn't that it shall adhere to the submitted site plan, but we can make that a condition just to make sure that they stay where they're put. So they stay where they're put. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So they stay right there and they don't have extras. If that's a that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. So. Looking for a motion. I'm looking for a motion to approve or deny. So I'd like to make the motion to um, approve this with the additional um, condition of a site plan be submitted. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry, no, you can't. With an additional, with the site plan be submitted um, as part of the conditions and any future changes would have to be vetted through the planning commission. Can we have some clarification? Commissioner Brender, is that what you were going to say? Yes. So did you want to include a setback as part of that motion? Well, if it's on the site plan now, no, we don't it, would, it okay. would be irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. So the motion would be to approve with 
the condition that any additional units would have to come back for a conditional use permit. Yep, and a, and a site plan. Yep, followed okay. as it's. Okay. Any other thoughts for a second? Commission. I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve with a site plan as part of the conditions that if there's these units stay where they're at, and if any other ones were added, it will have to come back. So um, we'll do a roll call vote. Karski? Aye. Benega? Aye. Barth? No. Bender? Aye. Heiberger? Aye. Motion passes four to one. Uh, Mason, we'll go on to the next one. Item number 11 is a public hearing for the appeal of the decision of the Minnehaha County Planning Commission to approve a CUP number 22-49 to allow a Class C hog confinement animal feeding operation on the property legally described as the southeast one-quarter section 28 Township 104 North Range 48 West. Mason. Yep. Mason, Stephan, Planning Department again. So the Planning and Zoning Office has received a signed appeal of the Planning Commission's decision to approve conditional use permit 2249, uh, which would allow a Class C hog concentrated animal feeding operation. The subject property is located approximately five miles southeast of Del Rapids, and the property is an existing farmstead that is on an approximately 160 acre tract of land. Uh, this conditional use permit request is to allow the petitioner to build a proposed hog barn that would, allow, that would contain up to 2,400 hogs or 960 animal units. Since the animal units for this request are between 500 and 999, it is determined to be a Class C concentrated animal feeding operation. This item was heard by the Planning Commission at their meeting on June 27, 2022. Several neighbors to the proposed barn were present at that meeting and stated their concerns with the proposed operation. Mostly at this meeting, there was discussion on how the, um, what measures could be taken to lessen the potential nuisance to the neighbors for this operation. Um, ultimately, the Planning Commission did vote to approve the proposed concentrated animal feeding operation with a vote of three to two. Uh, the permit was approved with the eight staff recommended conditions and additional ninth condition that required trees to be planted on the north side of the barn within one year. After the Planning Commission meeting, the we did receive an appeal letter that was signed by the husband, a husband and wife who live to the northeast of this property. Uh, the appeal letter was received on June 29th and the notices for this public hearing were sent to the surrounding owners the same day. After the appeal was filed and notices were sent, the petitioner and the neighbors to the northeast did come to their own separate agreement uh, with their own separate conditions in order to, for that neighbor to withdraw their appeal of that request. Uh, finally, the petitioner has stated that they are opposed to the ninth condition, which requires trees on the north side of the barn within one year, and they have submitted an updated odor model uh, to support this claim. Um, also, over the last day and a half, I've been talking to the neighbor to the northwest and the petitioner, and they have both stated to me that they are um, not opposed to the ninth condition being changed to um, allow the petitioner to only plant trees if it becomes a nuisance to the neighbors. So if you remember the last Nick mm -hmm. Simmons my barn back in April, we did that same sort of condition with the neighbors where if it became a nuisance, then they were required to plant trees. I've got confirmation from both the neighbor and the petitioner that that is the same with this one as well, just for your information. So uh, you can see this location map here. Uh, the neighbor to the northeast is along Logan Street, uh, just off the picture here. And then the other neighbor to the northwest is a um, cattle operation just out of picture as well. Uh, on this site plan, you can see where the proposed barn would be. Uh, it's just set back far enough from that east property line to meet the 50-foot setback. And that north side of the barn is the long side of the barn where the trees are proposed to be planted. And then if we scroll down here, this is um, the originally submitted odor model map, um, which shows the odor ring. That ring, I believe, is actually 99%, even though on that it says 98%. So the petitioner has submitted an updated odor model ring to show where the ring would be for 98% annoyance free. And then if we scroll past the building plans here, I'll go over some pictures. So here's the property looking to the south. Uh, you can see the shelter belt of trees along the existing heash 
uh, residents there. Uh, so this is to the south of where the petitioner's barn would go. And then this is looking, this picture is a little bit looking more to the southwest, uh, which shows the continuation of those trees and the general slope of the property to the southeast. This, this picture shows directly where the barn would be, so the barn would be pretty much exactly where I'm looking right here. And off to the northwest in this picture, you can see the uh, neighbor to the northwest there. And then this is looking directly north uh, along 41st Street, and just out of frame on the right side of this picture is where the neighbors to the northeast are located. Um, with that, the Minneapolis County Commission can uphold, deny, or amend the Planning Commission's approval of conditional use permit 2249, and I'm available for any questions. Okay. Any questions for Mason? Madam Chair. Commissioner Perth. You know, uh, it appears that all the obstacles to this project have been removed, mm -hmm. and if uh, the proponent uh, just wants to take the uh, trees out of it, it seems to me we could cut to the chase and unless somebody, maybe the Simmons must want to talk a lot more at the podium, uh, maybe we could just uh, go ahead and approve the project with uh, taking out uh, number condition nine. number nine. Okay. Reminds me of a Beatles song. So what Commissioner Barth was just saying is normally in a public hearing, and this is a public hearing, it, but if you want to waive your right to speak about this and the opponents want to waive their right to speak about it, we would just have an, um, have a motion to remove item number nine and have the original eight if my commissioners will make that vote. I mean, make that vote. And so um, I'm just, I'm giving you the opportunity to speak if you want. Okay. Madam Chair, we also have a Logan Township supervisor here. Okay. okay. Two. Hi, uh, Nick Simmonsma. Yeah, I guess like Mason said, I visited with both neighbors and we came up with an agreement that I think works out best for the both of us. So I just wanted to say that and okay. if there's any other questions from you guys. No, I'll give the yeah. opportunity for the proponents if they have anything they would like to say. All right. Or the opponents, excuse me. I don't see anybody jumping to the microphone. So I will bring it back to the commission and I would look for a motion. I would uh, make a motion to approve this with uh, taking out condition number nine. Second that motion. I have a motion and a second to approve with removing item number or the condition number nine. Uh, roll call vote. Barth. Aye. Bender. Aye. Karski. Aye. Benega. Aye. Heiberger. Aye. <coughs> motion passes unanimously. Item number 12 is authorize the chairman to sign an annexation petition for a section of the Prairie Nature Area legally described as track three of the GH Prairie edition in the north one quarter of the 28th, range 28th, oh, you didn't write them in there, 2810148, got to have those little letters in there, I get it mixed up, at the 5th p.m., uh, Minneapolis County. Sorry about that. Albert Schmidt, City <laughs> Falls Planning yeah. Office. Appreciate your time today. Uh, I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, we accidentally excluded one, you know, one small parcel along the highway there when we did our annexation earlier this year. It's approximately 0.43 acres in size. We're looking to include that and bring it in by itself so we just kind of formally get the whole area in. Okay. Any questions for Albert? If not, I'd look for a motion. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. It's way from before you even had a chance. Um, number 13 is a briefing on the fiscal year 2023 provisional budget. Susan. Good morning, Susan Beeman with the auditor's office. Um, this is our final opportunity to review the provisional budget before it comes back to you next week for final uh, official adoption. Um, we just wanted to go through um, what is currently brought and included in that budget um, just one more time. Per our conversation on July 5th, um, we have included additional opt-out dollars of $2,628,000. That leaves just a little bit over $2.1 million um, 
of unused opt out that had been passed a few years ago that remains unused at this time. Um, with that increase of our cash fund, um, our general fund cash applied is roughly $9.9 .9 million, which is that 5% threshold that we discussed on July 5th. Um, and just to remind you from a personnel perspective, we are budgeting a 10% increase in health insurance just to um, allow um, flexibility, you know, um, that officially will be set later in the fall, but we're building that cushion in along with that um, changing of the health insurance, um, county's portion of the health insurance is 75%. Um, and then we've listed on this memo the nine positions that you had approved um, or requested to be uh, um, included in the budget. Um, I won't read all of those. Um, there was still one position that you guys had um, talked about further dialogue on, um, so that would be still outstanding. Um, and then just for your reference, you know, we'll do the adoption um, of the provisional budget at the end of the month, um, the July 26th meeting, and then we will come back to you again in September for a public hearing on September 6th to have more dialogue on it. So we do have opportunity to change it between now and then, um, but we will have to publish any of our changes. So we like to keep those changes for final budget to the minimum just to reduce our publishing cost. Um, as you go down to the next page, um, we can kind of just go through a few things. Um, again, this is just a, the timeline of where our budget process has been. Um, nothing has changed on this from our previous conversations. Um, from here, this is that page that we've looked at before. So building in that 2,628,000 of opt out, it brings our budget uh, um, surplus to $520 um, with that 5% cash applied target. Any questions on this? Any questions so far? Uh, Susan, we got an email yesterday from um, Human Services that said that the city has offered to pay for the security at Safe Home. And so um, we will be putting another 25, 28,000 back uh, in our I budget. think it was 23,000 that there was an expense in the 2023 budget that um, we now have a different funding source for than what we had originally planned. So a huge thank you to the city of Sioux Falls. It was um, originally um, given to this county when the building was built by the city of Sioux Falls, needed to be upgraded, updated, whatever, and the city has put it in their budget to pay for that again. So thank you right. to Sioux Falls publicly. Um, so it'll be a very tiny amendment. Yes. yes. And then the, the last few slides are just the updated means of finance. Again, the only chain thing that um, Maybe, uh, forgot we had the slide in there. Um, this is just an updated levy estimates for um, 2023 um, that builds in the 2.6 million of opt out. Um, we did make one additional change to the slide from, from um, what you saw on July 5th. Um, you'll notice that the preliminary abstract values have increased by roughly $1.9 billion than last time. And what is causing that is we did a the county did their equalization process and that, that revaluation um, with the equalization to bring those values up to market. Um, that increased the abstract values by 1.9 billion in addition to the growth that we had previously listed in there. So that changed that number of the spread um, for the levy calculations quite a bit. Um, you'll see that the levy from 2022 to 2023 is actually going down. Um, and so you can see that impact on a $300,000 house that there's actually a decline in the levy. I just wanna caution that that doesn't necessarily mean that people will have a decrease in property taxes because if their values have also increased, that might change things for that homeowner. So this is saying a $300,000 house last year, $300,000 house for 23. So the value on that house stayed the same. That makes sense. Commissioner Kersky. Does that include the increased opt-out? Yes, that it does. does. Yes, okay. so the, on the, the general fund, the 54.5 billion includes the additional 2.6 million. Great, thank you. And also that's just the levy for the county. That doesn't include your school district or your fire or your library, or whatever else might be added onto your particular tax. Correct, yeah. it just is the county services levy. There's the whole 
other component of your property tax calculation. Additional questions on what's been presented so far? Okay. Yeah, more Susan or not? Okay, and then uh, the next two pages are just the additional, um, the updated means of finance. Again, the only thing that changed from July 5th is the addition of the 2.6 million of additional opt out. Okay. And then we want to talk about that JDC position. We can do that now if you'd like. Yeah. I did have a chance to talk to Jamie, the director of JDC, and we did talk about the, uh, frank, frankly, the difficulties that he's having trying to uh, access staff, and uh, I would say the intensity of the programs that he's had to serve, and uh, the people that we now are housing are a little more difficult than they have been in the past. So I would be in support of uh, adding that other request that he has uh, suggested to us that we had a conversation a couple of weeks ago about. Okay. Carrie, I'm putting you on the spot. Can you come up here a second? Um, Carrie and I have talked, and we didn't talk this week, so that's why I'm putting you on the spot. I think that we have funds in our overtime, our part-time, or overtime. Maybe Susan can talk about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, Susan. Maybe you've got the numbers. A full-time position would be just over seventy-two thousand um, dollars. We are expecting that we'd be able to reduce part-time budget by fifty thousand, so it would be a net increase in cost for that position of twenty-two thousand um, dollars. And then, with the news from yesterday with the safe home, that we'd be able to reduce twenty-three thousand. Um, we also have an additional six thousand dollars that we can remove from another area that is no longer needed in the budget. So essentially, with those three changes, we would um, not have any additional uh, shortfall to remain at the 5% cash applied. I support Chair, that. I'm sorry. Well, I just wanted to clarify for the public that JDC is Juvenile Detention Center. You know, we throw around a lot of acronyms, and, uh, you know, this is such an important uh, operation that the county manages. And, uh, you know, I think... Back when the dean was a truant, uh, probably skipped classes and wound up in the JDC. Now we have people uh, shooting guns at school or uh, hurting other people, etc. I mean, we we have some very tough people that wound up wind up staying in the juvenile detention center for a very long time. And uh, anyway, I just wanted a JDC. Thank you, Commissioner Karski. Did you have a comment? Okay, well, I need a motion or I think a motion to briefing. approve one more person. I think this is a briefing, so yeah. we can just give guidance to okay. staff that we're yeah. okay. in approval of adding another JDC position, and I'd be supportive of that as well. Okay, so I think we have consensus you're going to add that one okay. more position in there. We will proceed with making those three changes, so we will add the full-time JDC position of a one juvenile correctional officer one, we will reduce part-time budget by the 50000 and then we'll um, reduce the safe home budget. And then the fourth item would be that $6,000 item that I, I mentioned. Okay. Is there anything else we're missing? Well, we'll see you next week to okay. bring forward the official provisional budget adoption. Great. Thanks, Susan. Thank you. Uh, with that, we'll go on to item number 14, consider proposed results and award recommendations for the purchase of digital radios and authorize the chairman to sign an agreement between two ray Two-Way Solutions Incorporated. Uh, proposals were open July 8th on 20, 2022. Good morning, Commissioners. Jill Bosman with the Sheriff's Office. This morning I have in front of you a proposal response that we put out for digital radios. Earlier this year, uh, the Commission has graciously approved the usage of ARPA funding, which is the American Rescue Plan Act funding to be utilized to help purchase the digital radio upgrades for the various rural fire departments in Minnehaha County. To ensure compliance with the federal procurement uh, procedures, we went through a competitive sealed proposal process uh, that was advertised and uh, ended on July 8th when we opened our responses. Um, the response that we received was evaluated to ensure that it met the specifications of the radios that we were looking for and the response received from Two-Way Solutions Incorporated in Sioux Falls, South Dakota did meet those requirements that we were looking for. Uh, the pricing was outlined in the 
um, bid form and proposal form and contract. And at this time, we, we would like the commission to accept the proposal from Two Way Solutions Incorporated for the digital radios and authorize the chairperson to sign the contract and we can proceed with the purchasing. Questions? Motion? I would make a motion to approve the contract. I would second with a comment, Madam Chair. Motion is second with a comment from Commissioner Burke. Back in the day when we had the uh, uh, tornado in Spencer is when Governor Janklo realized that our different organizations, uh, the Highway Patrol, the Sheriff's Department, the firefighters were on different frequencies and could not talk to each other. And so uh, he brought them all together, got radios that they could talk to each other. And this honestly just occurred again in Texas in that horrible disaster down there. They had 300 plus uh, in law enforcement people there and they could not talk to each other. Uh, we cannot let that happen again in South Dakota. And uh, thank goodness uh, we're able to move forward with getting these radios for our emergency uh, personnel. I just have one question, Joe. Have you had any conversation about access to the equipment itself and when it would be shipped? Because I know supply and demand is crazy right now. Yes, it is crazy right now. And there is a, quite a delay with the shipping. Uh, we anticipate the P25 conversion, which is why we need these, these new upgraded radios to take place the fall of 2023. Um, with this approval, will help us get that order placed. And I would anticipate seeing them early 2023 is our hope. Okay. Wow. Sad. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a motion and a second. We'll need roll call vote. Benega? Aye. Barth? Aye. Bender? Aye. Karski? Aye. Heiberger? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank Thanks, Joe. Item number 15 is consider a resolution to establish Minnehaha County building permit valuations fee schedules effective October 1st, 2022. Kevin. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Kevin Hookman from the County Planning Department. Uh, so Minnehaha County recently adopted the 2021 International Building Code uh, and as to support the implementation of, of the building code, uh, we have a building permit fees um, for the inspections of those, those items. Uh, the fee schedule for uh, building permits is based on a square foot for new construction uh, and this that's the portion that is being changed uh, the last schedule update update was approved in 2020. Uh, the planning department is recommending a flat five percent increase in building permit valuations um, the this will increase revenue based on the last two years. The revenue increase will be somewhere between $7,560 to $7,885 annually. I'll uh, bring up here uh, on the screen, we have the historical changes for the building permit fees. Um, sometimes we've gone with the flat fee. Sometimes we have done the, the uh, fee increases where we adjust uh, to various types of building uh, s structure types. Um, and then on the, the right side of that screen, you can see the current Sioux Falls valuation uh, and Lincoln County's valuations, just so you can compare the where we are going to be proposing. Um, and if you go to the next slide, the 5% fee increase for the average house uh, in Minneapolis County uh, looks to be approximately $62 for the building permit fee. Um, if this is approved, uh, it will go in effect October 1st. Um, staff has brought this in front of, or before the Home Builders Association of Sioux Empire, and they had no concerns over the proposed increases. Um, so the county commission should take action to either approve or deny the resolution for the building permit fees uh, to take become effective October 1st, and I am available for any questions. Okay. Any questions for Kevin? We did talk about this recently. Uh, Commissioner Kursky? So the cost is 67 or the increase is $67? The, the, or the $62 would be the increase. So the average build-in permit fee for a house would be $1,240 in the current system, and the new would be $1,303. Any other questions for Kevin? 
Like I said, we discussed some of these changes in a commission meeting, uh, I don't know, a month or so ago about the need to do to stay up <coughs> with our fees. And it's not to make money, it's to cover expenses of the staff that's doing the yep. work and cover the cost of, of the supplies that are used to do these the work. So, Madam Chair, to your point, uh, it's not to make money. We are not making a profit uh, by doing this. Our expenses are going up more than 5%. Yep. And, uh, I uh, will make a motion to approve this, these increases. A motion. Second. A motion and a second. Uh, roll call vote. Barth. Aye. Karski. Aye. Bender. Aye. Benega. Aye. Heiberger. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thanks, Kevin. Item number 16 is to authorize the chairman to sign an agreement with Architectural Incorporated for the Juvenile Detention Center Architectural Services. Tyler Klatt. Good morning. Good morning, Tyler Flat Commission Office. Before you today, after following a competitive request for proposals process, we have a uh, selected architecture incorporated as the architectural design firm for the development of a new or remodeling of the existing juvenile detention center. The county would hold the contract with architecture incorporated and architecture incorporated has partnered with HDR who will provide the subject matter expertise on this project. Andrew Etrium is the principal architect for architectural Architecture Incorporated, and Jerry Guerrero is the key personnel from HDR. Tegra negotiated this agreement with Arch Architecture Incorporated and it was reviewed by the state's attorney's office. This agreement for phase one for the feasibility study would be for $154,500. And to elaborate a little bit more on what phase one means and what the following phases could be, so in order to select Arch Inc, there was a competitive process where we interviewed the firms that were submitted to this project. Following that process, we identified Architecture Incorporated as the most competitive um, option. The three steps that are involved in this project, step one is the feasibility study, which looks at what can we do with the existing facility? Is it possible to remodel it and what would that look like? The other option included in step one is to decide and to figure out what a remodel, or oh, sorry, a new build would look like. So those are the two options that are being looked at in this feasibility study, along with things like the population trends that were presented to you earlier this year. Step two would be finding a guaranteed maximum price that would be done with, in conjunction with the contracting firm and, architect, and the architecture firm. And then finally, step three is the construction phase, which as you can see in that table there, kind of lays out a, 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 an idea of how long each stage would take. The other aspect I'd like to point out is the fee related to this contract. Um, in that agreement, there, it's, noted, it's noted that a new facility, the fees that the architect would charge would be 8.25% and for a remodeled facility would be 9.25 and that's based on the kind of expected amount of work that would go into either one of those options. Uh, so if you have any questions I'm happy to answer those. We also have our owner's representative Dick Strasberg from Tegra is here too who can probably answer better questions a little stronger than I can but happy to try. Okay any questions about the contract or the process? Commissioner Bender. I have less of a question than just a comment. And I did have an opportunity to visit with Commissioner Heiberger and uh, Tyler yesterday. And I am going to support this. I mean, I think the work has already um, begun. That's typical for how these kind of things happen. But, you know, I think that everybody, I mean, from my perspective, this is just authorizing very preliminary studies to help us get our arms around what we have. And what we would like to do. I think that there's a lot of work to be done in educating me and the, com you know, the commission as to why we would do anything at all. Um, but just as in any other project, you got to gather your facts to try to make the best decision possible. And so, um, you know, this is a relatively large expense um, that we hadn't really budgeted for, but that we had talked about and that we were using available funds in our building fund to do. Um, but I just wanted to be clear that when I do support this, it's really just supporting this preliminary part because there's a lot I would have to know before I would be willing or able to move on to the next step. Additional comments? I would agree with Commissioner Bender. This is a first step, but we do need to have all the facts before we make a final decision and this conversation that we're going to get the experts' opinion on is important in that process. 
And as far as the budget, our budget was completed in September of 2021, finalized, and this project came up after the budget was completed. Um, we did have significant funding um, that was rolled over from last year of projects that we did not do in JDC. That was why it was we were comfortable with going forward because we actually had the money, even though it wasn't budgeted line item in 21. We used funds from the 21 budget and rolled them over into 22 to cover the expenses of this beginning project. So there was And I think it's worth more. noting that that savings is because of our facilities director who's done a great job at right. looking at how that stuff works. So, okay. Um, if there are no more questions, like we said, we have uh, Mr. Strasburg here too. If there's any questions for him on the process or pro project, then I would look for a motion. I would make a motion to approve the contract. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call vote. Benega. Aye. Bender. Aye. Barth. Aye. Kursky. Aye. Heiberger. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, last item is the Commissioner Liaison Reports. We've been gone for a couple weeks. Commissioner Bender. Um, we did have a MacArthur uh, Safety and Justice uh, Committee implementation meeting last week. Um, I've got some uh, brochures that I can make available to the commissioners about community engagement, neighborhood events that are upcoming, um, and some training series that are also um, have have started but are also mostly upcoming. So I'll get that um, available, that information available to the commissioners, so everybody can um, participate in that if they're interested in um, that. I think the most um, what, what's coming next for MacArthur is a renewal of that grant. A portion of that grant is up for renewal. And I think we'll have some very interesting discussions about um, what we've done with that grant and what, what is possible um, in the future. We won't be funding any new positions if we do apply for that grant. Um, but there will be some, um, I think we'll need to have some significant discussion about what, if anything, we should do going forward with that. Okay. Additional liaison reports? Okay, I have a couple of them. Um, I attended the Justice Involved Leaders of Tomorrow graduation, which is one of the um, projects that is funded by the Safety and Justice Challenge. Um, Leaders of Tomorrow is a I say organization, I don't know, is, is, is a class that um, you can apply for and take to teach you and to help you motivate you to be a better leader. Um, we have taken people that have been uh, um, chosen by the courts or probation officers and taken justice involved people and put them in the leaders of tomorrow training um, in more of a justice involved like curriculum, and it has been incredibly successful thus far. Those funds have come from Safety and Justice. So on graduation, they had several of, from both classes, either the Leaders of Tomorrow or the Justice Involved Leaders of Tomorrow, speak at the graduation exercises and um, just tell about where they have come and the hope that they have and um, what it has meant to them. And then they continue to mentor those people as they move forward in their lives, and they've seen some you know, at this point, some very successful stories on the Justice Involved Leaders tomorrow. And I will have to say that um, one of the gentlemen that I sat at our table was from our Sheriff's Office. And obviously, he's not Justice Involved. He was on the positive side of the Leaders of Tomorrow, but um, he t talked to and had a video of how great he thought this program was. So um, that video is out there on the website. I don't have that off the top of my head, but that is out there of one of our um, sh um, Sheriff deputies was involved. Um, also, then I would report to that I did two of the um, juvenile detention center design team um, meetings. We had one where we sat around as, as a whole group and discussed um, area by area what that might look like going forward, like the Sally Port and, um, and the judges' chambers and um, the areas where the students would go to school or where they would be housed and put together some preliminary ideas. And then this last week, a team of about 12 of us, I think, about 12, um, met down in Kansas City, and we went to Joplin, Missouri, and Olathe, and um, Wyandotte County, and looked at their juvenile detention centers to see what best practices they had put in, um, talked about what things they wouldn't do, what things they would do differently, and um, how that looks. Talked about cost, too, which um, their JDCs, just a few years prior to ours, were a whole lot cheaper than what we're looking at now. So. Um, 
but some really good information came from that. And so we will be meeting again this week to talk about some of the things that we liked, that we didn't like, and how that might be incorporated into this conversation on the first phase of what we're doing. And then my last one is, we have the National Association of Counties Organization Convention is this week. Commissioner Karski and myself will both be traveling to Denver for that. It's Thursday through Monday, no, Thursday through Sunday. Thursday through Sunday, um, Commissioner Karski is the president of the South Dakota Association of County Commissioners and will be representing the state as our voting delegate, uh, one of our voting delegates at that. Um, I sit on the safety and justice group and the national level, um, and we will be continuing to work on resolutions to take to um, the Capitol and support um, work with the safety and justice in the United States. Also, we look at emergency management resolutions. So. If there are no more liaison reports, we'll go on to non-action commission discussion. I'm not seeing any, so then I would look for a motion to recess. Um, and we will readjourn it for executive session in, um, let's say, 10 minutes. So I'd look for a motion to recess. That's so, my motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. We are recessed. Thanks for coming. Are you guys driving to Denver? Or?